again Oda really are we actually still doing this last week's chapter was a 10 out of 10 we get Emu actually saying something we get Cobra dying at the hands of Emu we get the Gorosei showing off their powers we get Emu showing off their powers we get Sabo fighting off Emu and the Gorosei at the same time we get Wapo catching a glimpse of Emu causing Wapo to run away and snatching Vivi on his way out this is not to mention all the lore drops that we ended up getting regarding the will of D obviously I may be leaving out a few minor details but what else could you ask for in a single chapter either way the streak of greatness continues as Oda again outdoes himself this chapter is somehow even greater than the last one and I don't understand how he does it unlike what most of us expected the Sabo flashback actually still continues the rest of the five elders names are actually revealed and each of them has the title of a warrior god real quick for me if you've enjoyed this video so far make sure you press that like button make sure that you subscribe because these things really help me as a small youtuber now Saint Jake Garcia Saturn the one headed to Egghead Island is the warrior god of scientific defense Saint Shepherd Jupiter also known as Sanji's dad the blonde Gorosei member is known as the warrior god of agriculture next up we got Saint Ethan Baron Venus also known as Samurai Gandhi who is known as the warrior god of financial affairs we also got Saint Topman Mercury the one that looks like Gorbachev he is the warrior god of legal affairs last but not least Saint Marcus Mars the one that looks like Dumbledore is the warrior god of environment Jesus that was exhausting let's be honest most of us are probably not gonna remember any of these we'll still probably call them Samurai Gandhi Gorbachev Dumbledore things like that moving on we find out that the weapon that was used to destroy Lulucia kingdom by Emu was not the ancient weapon Uranus but instead a weapon that was created by Dr. Vegapunk for the world government. We've met Dr. Vegapunk by now we know what his intentions are so I'm sure that he created this weapon without the idea that the government would ever do anything like that with it. He's got a heart of gold well for the most part like man's got a big brain he just wants to learn he's not interested in any conflict politics he's not out to get anybody. Either way I'd be interested to knowing what his reaction would be to the Lulucia incident. Moving on over we also find out that there was a Saint Emu from the Nerona family among the first 20 founders of the world government. And like most of us expected, this tells us that Emu has been existing since the void century and is one of the first 20 founders of the world government. We also find out that Don Quixote Mjolsgaard, the good celestial dragon, has been sentenced to death by the Holy Knights for helping Shirahoshi during the events of the Reverie and assaulting Saint Charlos. While this is unfortunate, we do see more important news here where the leader of the Holy Knights has been revealed. It's the same character that was speculated to be Shanks. Speaking of Shanks, this character also happens to be from the Figurland family just like him, further enforcing the idea that Shanks has celestial dragon blood. This also means that the Holy Knights leader, the one from the Figurland family, is most likely to be Shanks' father, Shanks' brother, or a close relative of some sort. If I were a betting man, I would say that this is Shanks' father due to the character looking a bit older. He is indeed a celestial dragon and his name happens to be Saint Figurland Garling. He wears sunglasses, has pointy hair, a pointy beard that helps form a crescent moon shape. <laughs> it's Shiro Oda, ladies and gentlemen. We cut to the present day and Ivankov is over here trying to speculate how the hell Emu could be from the Founding 20. Ivankov then suggests that a previous user of Laws Ope Ope no Mi could have done the eternal life surgery on Emu like 800 years ago, which would then explain how Emu is still currently alive and ruling over the world. This is what most of the fandom has speculated so far and I'm curious to know whether this is indeed the case. Again, we get another chapter of Dragon making shock faces but not actually contributing to anything like go do something bro like oh Vegapunk gave the world government a weapon of this magnitude I'm so shocked like bro your own second in command is overshadowing you it's been like 1086 chapters and you still haven't done anything Ooh, the world's most dangerous man and then he wonders why all these things are happening as he has his feet up every other chapter just making shocked faces reading the newspaper moving away from that we get S Flamingo S Crocodile and S Gecko in this chapter which leaves me wondering are we gonna get S Clown S Blackbeard, S. Law, S. Weevil by the end of the series, or is this it for the Seraphim? The chapter ends off with Big News Morgans and Vivi, with the narrator stating that Big News Morgans is about to do something ridiculous that's about to shake the whole world. Let's be honest, if we had to guess what it was, it's probably the existence of Emu sitting upon the empty throne and ruling over the world in the shadows this whole time. And with that, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you press that like button, make sure that you're subscribed because these things really help me as a small YouTuber. Besides that, the common question of the day is is do you think that Figurland Garling is Shanks' dad? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. And have a good one.